Hello again, my name is Pelin. I'm working in a primary step screening center and work talking about the uh, basic step of screening emissions. Emissions are produced in uh, a normal ear from the outer hair cells, uh, the uh, motile organs of the cochlea. Uh, for almost the, uh, 50 to 60 percent of the population, in normal population, uh, a cochlea produces these sounds. So we can use these sounds to screen the uh, normal working of the uh, inner ear. Uh, my content uh, flow is like screening, uh, how we can use it, uh, the step by step and uh, difficulties and solutions in practice. Autoacoustic emissions are sounds emitted uh, by the cochlea either spontaneously or uh, in a response to an uh, auditory stimulus. A given stimulus is transmitted by a probe which is placed in the external ear and a, uh, the sound is uh, transmitted to the tympanic membrane to, through the uh, ossicles to the hair cells. As a given sound is transferred to the brain, a normal ear is simultaneously uh, producing autoacoustic emission. Uh, can be also uh, defined as an output reflection of a given sound to the inner ear. This reflection can be recorded by a microphone which is also placed in the in, uh, ear canal and analyzed as pastor refer. Uh, when failed, uh, when an ear uh, failed, we cannot uh, analyze this as a hearing loss, but we refer the ear to the uh, more complicated screening methods or the uh, diagnostic tools such as ABR uh, to uh, diagnose as uh, really if whether present uh, uh, hearing loss or not. Silence of the environment is important for the screening method, uh, the uh, reliability, screening method's reliability, and uh, the silences must be confirmed before the test. Screening should be done in the screening center. When we look at step by step, uh, the most important things uh, begin with positioning of the baby. Baby should be in a relaxed position uh, and should become uh, position of the test applier. Choosing a appropriate probe, the probe uh, should be placed in the ear canal. Placement of the probe and the cables and the uh, beginning of the test. Positions of the baby, uh, comes of the baby, sleeping or at least quiet, uh, not, uh, sh should, shouldn't move too much. Uh, it's preferred, uh, preferred to test the baby in the first one hour of the, uh, after feeding, uh, because babies generally stay very calm in the first, uh, first one hour after feeding. Baby should be fed, burped out uh, and with a clean diaper. Gently fixed with a comfort, comfortable cloth and the screening can be done on parent's lap or screening stretcher. Uh, test applier should take a place uh, mostly gen uh, generally parallel to the uh, baby to uh, easily, can easily manage the ear canal and visualize the ear canal and manage the probe. <coughs> Appropriate probe is very important. Uh, provides stimulus to be kept in the ear canal, decreases environmental noise interference and increases taste reliability. Ear canal entrances of babies can show much uh, variabilities. Tip of the probe should be big enough. Uh, these examples are disposable, uh, reusable ones. We can clean the uh, tips of the uh, probes. Uh, sometimes the axis of the ear canal can obstruct the uh, um, the holes of these probes. Uh, we know that the newborn babies can uh, bear some amniotic fluids or the vexes, for example, wearing scoziosa in the external ear canal. So, uh, especially in the newborn period, these vexes can obstruct the tips. Uh, in that case, uh, these ones, uh, as a, 
uh, defined in the guideline books of the uh, manufacturer firms uh, can be cleaned uh, easily and reusable. In certain cases, we cannot reuse them. For example, infectious dermatitis of the babies. Uh, placements of the probes and the cables are also very important. Uh, it's crucial to fix the tip of the probe for the procedure. Uh, uh, upon appropriate probe placement, a probe is fixed. Uh, auricula can be held with one hand and the other hand uh, pushes the probe with 45 angle degree and with a slight turning move we will we'll, uh, show it in practice uh, in the afternoon. We shouldn't be very hard, uh, of course, uh, not to harm the baby. Uh, when the probe is uh, stabilized, we shouldn't uh, hold the uh, line and the cable. When we hold the cable, any move of us or the baby can produce some artifacts on the uh, emission uh, graphics. So um, the stabilization should, be, uh, should need any support of uh, our hands or anything else. We can uh, turn the cables uh, on the top of the baby to assure this. Uh, we can uh, we can sometimes um, co connect the cables on each of them. Ear canal uh, can be filled with amniotic fluid, as I have mentioned just before. Uh, so. Um, we know that before extermination we should uh, screen all of the babies, uh, but before because the vernix caseosa or the amniotic fluids, uh, first few hours of the birth uh, can uh, minimize the reliability of the tests. So uh, first 40, uh, 48 uh, hours, first, first two days actually is enough the cleaning, cleaning of the uh, vaxes of the external ear canal. Uh, in that case, we generally uh, uh, propose to uh, screen the babies before extermination. Uh, and also, we can uh, ease the cleaning of the external ear canal with the message uh, can be done uh, on the uh, preauricular area. Uh, and we can move the auricular backwards superiorly and inferiorly. What sort of uh, difficulties and solutions uh, we can um, face in practice? Uh, prob related problems, uh, for example, obstructed filter of the prop, uh, the uh, holes in the prop tip, obstructed cable, also at the end of the cable there is a hole and this can be obstructed with the vexes or the vernix uh, uh, caseosa of the external ear canal or the inappropriate probe size can also uh, diminish the reliability of the tests. Uh, environmental noise can uh, decrease the reliability. Restless of the baby is a very big problem. Sometimes the baby cannot uh, sleep or uh, may have some gas problem uh, because of the overfeeding or the baby just can be um, uh, hungry. Uh, in that case, restless baby is a very big problem. And narrow ear canal is also a problem. Obstructed probe yields nonsense results. It sh should be checked every time before the tests. Uh, if obstructed should be cleaned or changed, uh, this is also defined as I have mentioned just before, manufacturer guidelines. Environmental noise, uh, it's, uh, uh, there is a warning sign in the text uh, screen, uh, test screen on the uh, uh, computer. Uh, when the environmental noise increases, uh, it uh, shows you that you cannot go on uh, tests, so you should check the uh, environmental noise and decrease it. Uh, source should be detected and the necessary actions should be taken. You can warn the environment, uh, you can uh, keep away a bit distance or the close the uh, device uh, or using some kind of uh, signboards. To uh, increase the restlessness of the baby, you can uh, take the baby into the uh, onto lap of the mother. Uh, we can generally use stretchers or the tables, but the uh, mother uh, semi-fat -fat baby or the burp baby is uh, very comfortable. Sleep the baby, or we can use swaddles. Narrow ear canal is a congenital problem generally. Uh, sometimes the ear canal cannot. Uh, and large enough. 
Uh, if probe cannot be placed because narrowness of the ear canal, where we can fail the test, but this, uh, in this kind of situations, we should not inform the parents as the failed or the sensor neural hearing loss uh, or that sort of things. We should uh, refer the baby to the ABR or the uh, more complicated uh, screening tests uh, before informing the uh, parents. When baby fails the test, aim is not provide all tests uh, should be uh, to be uh, passed. Uh, if we uh, repeat tests more and more, um, test results in, at the end of the day uh, will turn into passed. Uh, but our aim is not uh, to get all results to be passed. Uh, even a baby with a hearing loss, when tests repeated too many times, this can happen incorrectly passed. This is a misdiagnosis. So, uh, guidelines should be followed in these cases. When to repeat tests, uh, probe displacement during tests, too much baseline noises, uh, restless crying or fast sucking baby, uh, fast sucking uh, causes a, uh, too much muscle movement, uh, too much contractions. This is also uh, can be uh, considered as a baseline noise. And uh, obstructed probe cable line, uh, probe or cable, uh, any kind of ob obstruction uh, decreases test reliability. And uh, in the end, we, we uh, complete the test. The uh, tip of the probe can be uh, reusable or after cre proper cleaning or uh, we can uh, discharge the probe and use a new one. Uh, if our baby fails, uh, we can retest the baby or uh, refer it to the uh, reference center for the ABR. Thank you.